Hi all, so this is Sean from Time and Talk. I wanted to make a video about the new Rolex releases. Obviously I'm a little bit late to the party, um, haven't had time to make a video on this yet, but it, I think it's relevant and important to make a video on it because it's not just about the reveal because I don't think anyone really knew what was gonna be released, particularly some of the new releases. And also I was affected myself by the new releases because of um the watches that i have in my collection so tell me what you think in the comments of the new rolex releases and um let me know particularly if you're an explorer owner what you think about the, the obvious changes that have happened so it was interesting really because i was planning on making a video or thinking about making a video about how I don't really care about the new Rolex releases because I won't be able to buy them, you know, all that sort of stuff. And that still stands, I guess, because, you know, it's, it, they're quite inaccessible for the majority of people who use Rolex models. But happened on the date when they were released. I was just on Instagram. A lot of the accounts, obviously, that I follow are watch accounts. I came across the news that they'd actually re-released the 36mm Explorer. And I was like, whoa, and I didn't quite know how to react to that because... I own a 39 millimeter and you know I think I think it's interesting because in the run up to Watch Some Wonders and Basil World and all that sort of stuff we have all these predictions that come out that say this is what we think Rolex are going to release and I don't kind of bother with that and I, I always think that is there any point because we, we don't know do we but but anyway again tell me what you think about the predictions and whether you're right and maybe i'm wrong maybe the predictions that most people make were kind of right and on the money and things like that so i'm just going to go through the the new releases and i'm just going to give a little bit of my thoughts on on, on those releases so again if i look down and just consult my notes so first of all new date just so bunch of new date just releases um, primarily in terms of the, the dial configurations. So the, the one that I picked out as the kind of most different one, if you like, is the one with the palm dial. So it's basically got a palm motif on the dial. I'll put, it, I'll put a, a picture on the screen. Tell me what you think of it. I mean, I quite like it really, but it's, it's really not me. It's something that I think I would get bored of if I was to buy it as part of my collection. But I, I do like it. I think it's quite a nice watch. It does look nice in pictures and, and, and things like that. But yeah, so that those are the first releases that were released, the 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 slight changes to the date just line. Secondly, Daytona. So the Daytona has a new dial, essentially, a meteorite dial. So I think it's available in white gold, yellow gold, rose gold. And it's it's got a meteorite dial. Uh, the meteorite dial came to the GMT Master first, I think, and now it's it's come to the Daytona. So again, it's it's relatively Rolex like and a, not massive changes, just the new dial, but it's quite nice. I mean, I'm not really a huge fan of the Daytona, and in terms of white gold, yellow gold, um. Uh, I don't have the money to be able to buy one of those, so <laughs> not for me. Um, another thing which is quite interesting is Rolex, and it, it, it isn't down as one of their new 2021 releases, but you can now get the Pepsi and Batman with either an, an Oyster bracelet or a Jubilee bracelet, so you can actually choose on the website and configure it in that way. It's interesting because some people have said you know is this going to destroy the second hand market for the batman the batgirl the, the pepsi and, and and things like that it doesn't seem to have had so far because they're still selling for way above retail but i mean it, it is a good thing that we can now choose the oyster or the jubilee bracelet and you know will they become more accessible to the average person probably not i do really like the gmt master and I do like it even more because obviously the Submariner has gone up to 41 millimeters. The GMT stayed at 40. So I think that's a bonus in terms of someone with slightly smaller wrists. I would love one. Don't think I'll ever be able to afford one, but that's a watch that I would re I would buy if I, if I had enough money for it. Interesting in terms of the predictions that were happening in the run up to Watch Some Wonders was people were thinking it's the Explorer 2's 50th anniversary. Is it going to get 
a ceramic bezel? Is it going to get a whole new makeover? Obviously, a lot of Rolex watches do. Anniversaries come up and, and they completely revamped the watch. You know, the Kermit came out when, when it was the 50th anniversary of the Sunbariner. It doesn't look like they've made many changes at all. I mean, some people are saying that the case does look slightly different and they have made kind of very, very tiny changes in that sense and aesthetic changes. But there is a new movement in the Explorer too, but it didn't get the revamp that maybe some people had expected. Um, some people have been saying it's too good a watch to, to update and things like that. But I do think that it wouldn't have made any sense to put a ceramic bezel on the Explorer too, because it's already, always had a steel bezel. And why, you know, why would you just change a watch like that? Especially Rolex, you don't tend to do things like that. But... You know, I didn't expect some of the news that came out. Not a huge fan of the Explorer 2. I like the previous generation, but I think it's too big for me. And the watch for me looks, I don't know, there's something not right about it, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Tell me what you think in the comments. But, but yeah, the Explorer 2 didn't get the update that obviously people maybe expected. And then... Obviously, the big the big news was the Explorer. So I have an Explorer, um, a two one four two seven zero, which I bought in twenty sixteen. It's a Mark One Explorer thirty nine millimeter, and it's interesting really that the Explorer came out in twenty ten. The Mark One and the Mark Two came out in twenty sixteen. And as a 39mm owner, I always thought perhaps it will become collectible, but that would have relied on the 39mm existing for a long time and then the, the Mark I becoming rare as a result. Um, and I don't think anyone predicted that they were going to bring back the 36mm Explorer. Tell me what you think of that decision. I mean, I felt a little bit, oh, you know, is how is this going to affect the value of the 39 millimeter but also it felt like rolex was saying they've made a mistake with the 39 millimeter they're going back to the 36 because they should never have released the 39 millimeter and it felt it felt like it had devalued the 39 millimeter to me in a, in a sense we'll see what happens because obviously normally when Rolex discontinues something, it goes up in value. People are saying that that's happening, but I, I don't know. I don't know. In terms of primarily in terms of size, it would be a go-to for me for the, for the 36, but it also feels that Rolex are kind of saying, you know, ha ha ha, you cannot predict what we're going to do because the prevailing trend in, in, in Rolex watches has been to increase the size the Submariner, the Oyster Perpetual, things like that. And then they go and decrease the size of an Explorer, which does not make any sense. Because when I was buying mine, I tried a 36mm on and I, I didn't like the size. I'm not going to say it's too small because I've owned a date just and, and that was fine. And that suited my wrist more maybe than the 39mm. But I don't know, I, I do feel for people who, who have a big wrist as well, because even though obviously 36 millimeter in the past was a standard side and anybody could wear it. Um, yeah, there's just something a bit off about it, something a bit strange about, about why they went to the 36. Um, and obviously the, the, the even stranger decision was the two-tone. I, I like two-tone watches, I, I think two-tone sports watches, particularly Rolex watches, do straddle quite a nice line between between dressy and sporty. But in terms of the Explorer, it's never been a two-tone. There's never been any precedent for it. And with it being 36 millimeter, it's quite small for a, for a two-tone watch in, in the sense that obviously subs, two-tone subs are 41. So some people have been saying, is it, is it a like a, a woman's watch is it has it been marketed as a as a woman's watch and is it trying to capture you know the Chinese market and things like that where they they would buy it as a kind of status symbol 
I'd say it is a very interesting decision, quite a strange one, but I mean, it is in line with what Rolex have done with the other models. You know, they've always had two tone watches. Um, I don't mind it. I don't mind the two tone aesthetically. I just think historically, most people would want the Explorer to be steel. And I'm I'm probably going to make a, a whole video on the 36mm versus 39mm Explorer because it's an interesting one, I, I think. And I do think it's kind of Rolex saying screw you to the people who try to predict what models they're going to release. But anyway, yeah, so that's, that's just a run through of the new Rolex releases in 2021. Tell me in the comments what you think of them, what you think of the new releases, particularly the Explorer, because I'm interested to know what people think of that. Thanks very much for watching. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Bye-bye.